Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at capacitance, so let's get started. We'll start by looking at what a capacitor actually is. So it says here that a capacitor is a circuit component that stores electrical charge. And you might remember from National 5 Physics that a capacitor will also store energy. They are typically used to provide a time delay in electronic circuits. The ability of a capacitor to store charge is known as its capacitance. And a typical capacitor consists of two conducting layers separated by an insulator, such as air, as shown in this circuit diagram here. So we've got our two conducting layers, which could be two metal plates, for example, and these are separated by air, which is our insulating layer. It then goes on to say that when a source of EMF, such as a cell, is connected to a capacitor, electrons flow from the negative terminal of the cell or battery onto one of the capacitor plates, giving this plate a negative charge. So if we look at this circuit diagram, for example, we've got the battery source, the EMF here, and the negative terminal and positive terminal of the battery. So remember that electrons will flow from the negative terminal of the battery round to the positive terminal of the battery. But we're saying that if we've got a capacitor in the circuit, the electrons from the negative terminal are going to build up on one of the capacitor plates. So all of the electrons moving around in this direction will build up on this plate on the left hand side here, causing that plate to become negatively charged. It then says that these electrons cannot cross the insulating layer, but electrons on the other plate are repelled and moved to the positive terminal of the cell, leaving the plate with a positive charge. So the electrons on the right hand plate of the capacitor are going to be repelled away from the electrons on this side, and they're going to move towards the positive terminal of the battery. And because these electrons have been repelled away, that means there is a net positive charge existing on this right hand plate of the capacitor. So we now have a negatively charged plate on the left, and a positively charged plate on the right. And this actually sets up an electric field, and therefore a potential difference. So in this way, electrons can flow around the circuit, and we're saying that the electrons cannot actually cross the gap, it's the electrons over here that are repelling the electrons over here away from it. And in this way, the electrons can continue to flow around the circuit. As the current flows, there is a build-up of negative charge on one plate and positive charge on the other. This creates a potential difference across the plates, and this happens because of the electric field set up between the positively and negatively charged plates. So remember, the electric field lines will go from positive to negative, and the existence of the electric field creates a potential difference. We say that the potential difference across the plates acts in the opposite direction to the EMF of the cell, i.e. clockwise in the circuit above. So all we're saying here is that the electric field direction is going to the left in this case from positive to negative, and that is actually against the direction of the EMF which comes anti-clockwise here. Lastly, it says that when the potential difference across the capacitor is equal to the EMF of the cell, the current ceases to flow and the capacitor is now fully charged. Let's say we have a 10 volt battery, then when the potential difference across the capacitor increases to 10 volts, then we're saying that the current will stop flowing in the circuit and we say that the capacitor is now fully charged. So the capacitor will be fully charged when the potential difference across it is equal to the potential difference of the supply. That's all for this video folks, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.